My full name was Eleanor May Christ. Okay, and when were you born? I was born September 17, 1918. And you were born in York? I was born in York. And do you know, uh, where were you born in the hospital? Were you born at home? No, I was born at home. At home. Mm -hmm. The same house that I was born in, I lived there even after Grandpa and I were married until mm -hmm. it was sold after my father passed away. Oh, wow. And what was your father's name? My father's name was James Anderson Christ. Do you know when he was born? It he was born, his birthday was in March. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you the year of, on either one of them, I'm sorry to say, but I can't mm -hmm. tell you the year of the, either one of them. And But they were both born in Indiana. In Indiana. And met there and then moved to Nebraska. And what was your mother's name? My mother's name was Clara May Emerson. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you had lots of brothers and sisters, didn't you? I had uh, two sisters and two brothers. What were your sister's names? I had a sister. My oldest sister was Vera Robinson, and my younger sister was Luella uh, Ballou. My oldest brother was Orville Christ, and then my brother that lived here in California, Homer Christ. And do you remember what year they were born? No, that I can't <laughs> tell you. <laughs> I just know that, in fact, the only one that I'm sure of that uh, Luella was um, only in her 40s when she passed away, and my brother that lived here, Homer, was 83 when he passed away. And do you, were you named after anybody, or just I after yourself? Named, the May was after my mother. Uh huh. But Eleanor is just your own I name. I don't know where <laughs> that came from. I never figured that out. <laughs> and who do they think you look like? Uh, I look like my mother mm -hmm. more than my dad. And how old was your mother when you were born? Uh, my mother was in her 40s when I was born. And you were the youngest? Yes, I was the youngest. Probably a big surprise in her 40s. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Can you describe the best birthday you ever had? Yes, the best birthday, um, especially when I was a teenager, I had never had a birthday before. And on my 16th birthday, my mother had a big birthday mm -hmm. party for me and we had it out in the yard and that was the first birthday I'd mm -hmm. ever had. The first party and everything? And yeah mm -hmm. and we had a we had a great time. Mm -hmm. I've had some wonderful ones since <laughs> I've gotten older. Hope you have a really good one in three weeks. Real good yes, party in that's three weeks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you remember your favorite birthday present? Well you know when I was growing up we didn't get presents too much. We might have gotten just a little gift of some kind. Um, Looking back, I'm trying to think what my best birthday present ever was. Um, I think, especially since I've been married, and uh, just having my family together mm -hmm. and being together, that's mm -hmm. the best present I could ever want. What was your favorite toy? My favorite toy? Well, I had a pair of roller skates. <laughs> I don't know whether it was my favorite or the worst. I had a terrible time trying to learn to roller skate. We lived on a little incline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took more falls than I can possibly remember. Uh, thank goodness I didn't end up with any broken bones. But um, I loved those roller skates, mm -hmm. even though I never did master them very well. Are they a present from somebody? Uh, I can't remember whether they were a present or whether um, they just were uh, something that my dad was a great person. And if I wanted anything, if there was any way in the world that he could possibly get it for me, he did. Well, that's nice. How much does a tooth fairy leave you for a tooth? <laughs> well, probably a nickel or a dime <laughs> was about the best I could do on a on, from the tooth fairy. That's what Gammy says too. Gammy says she got a dime from the mm -hmm. tooth fairy too. Mm -hmm. Teeth weren't worth much to <laughs> the years, I guess. How old were you when you started getting an allowance, and how much was it? You know, I don't even remember of getting an allowance. Uh, Did you hear that? I don't I, I really don't recall ever getting an allowance. If I needed something or of course my favorite thing growing up was dancing and uh, I used to go to dances all the time as a teenager and uh, my mother worked all the time and so on Saturday it was my uh, job to clean the house and um, the only 
thing, if I didn't do it and do it like it should be done, they knew that the best punishment they could give me was to tell me I couldn't go to right. the dance that night. But I don't ever recall, um, you know, actually getting an, mm -hmm. a, a weekly or a monthly allowance. Mm -hmm. I don't ever recall that. When you were given money, if they just gave you money for something, what did you spend it on? Probably clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your daughter takes after you. They all do. <laughs> what could you buy for a quarter? Oh, at least two candy bars back mm -hmm. in my days when I was growing up, and oh, for a quarter. Gee, we could get quite a bit because candy bars at that time were a nickel a piece. Ice cream cones were a nickel a piece. Uh, gum was, uh, well, you used to be, uh, I think it was a penny a stick. Uh, so you could get quite a bit for a quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, gee, I could even treat some of my friends with a quarter. <laughs> When you were growing up, what was the naughtiest thing you ever did? The naughtiest thing I ever did? Oh, golly. <laughs> That's hard to remember. Um, I'm sure I did some. <laughs> um, I, I can't, well, it maybe you could say it was the naughtiest thing, and yet it probably sounds very tame in this day and age, but I worshipped my dad, and one time, one evening, my mother told me to go out and call my dad in to supper, and he was cutting wood, and I went out to tell him to come in to eat, and as he cut this piece of wood, a piece of it flew to the side, and he asked me to go over and pick it up, and for some unknown reason, I wouldn't do it. I would not go over and pick up that piece of wood. Well, my dad did, and he used it on me. And it's the one and only spanking I ever got from my dad, and he felt worse about it than I did because I really deserved it. That's right, it's the present, that's a, oh, it sounds very tame, but it's all I can think of right now, but I know I did a lot of it. In fact, I know I went to dances on Sunday night sometimes when my dad didn't know it, and he, he would not have approved of that at all. <laughs> what games or sports did your mom and dad play with you? I didn't hear you. What uh, sports or games did your mom and dad play with you? Uh, we used to play hide the thimble mm -hmm. and button button. Mm -hmm. Those were games that we played. And as a child, we used to, uh, on, in the winter time, especially as a child growing up, we used to play rummy with mm -hmm. cards mm -hmm. a lot. And um, practically every Sunday, uh, my brothers and sisters came and we had a family dinner. This was just something that we did every every Sunday, and um, and we used to uh, as when the family gathered together, some of them that were closer to my age, we used to play hide and seek and things like that. Of course, the the parents didn't join in with that, but we used to play hide the thimble and button mm -hmm. button and things same like things that. Same things, same similar things that we play today, with our kids. <sighs> Yeah, we, we play, well that's what we, no, that's what we play sometimes with our kids too. So Do you really? Like, oh yeah. Well yeah, we used to, they call used it different. to hide the thimble well, was fun. They, they call it something different, they call it doggy doggy where's the bone. Oh, but it's okay. The same thing. <laughs> yeah, well that's what we used to do and I'm trying to think of some of the other things. In the summertime, uh, all the neighborhood kids used to gather on the corner where I lived, uh, intersection or corner, whatever you want to call it. We used to play pum pum, pull away, kick the can, um, and we played hide and seek until mm -hmm. it got so dark that we couldn't. But this was just a, a an evening mm -hmm. occurrence, almost every evening during the summer that we could. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember some of the. I imagine, like you say, some of them are, are the same games that they play today, but they're just have different names. Right, right. Um, what was your favorite story that your parents either told you or read to you? I'm not hearing you. Your uh, favorite story your parents either, either told you or read to you? I think probably the most favorite one that they ever uh, told or read to me I can't remember my parents reading to me too much. I guess they were just so busy raising their family. They didn't really take a lot of time to do those types of things. But they used to tell me stories about the wintertime in Indiana 
and on their trip to Nebraska, uh, because they came by covered wagon, and how cold and terribly cold it was, and how little they had to do with, and uh, how they just, the whole group formed a, a family together, and that's how they got through. Uh, and, and even in those days when we had some really bad winters and it was uh, some pretty rough times, um, your family was just your, mm -hmm. your um, support. Now, when they came, I'm sorry, when they came, like right covered wagon, were they children or were they adults? No, they were adults. Oh. They were adults when they came to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. They were adults. They married in Indiana? Uh-huh, and then they settled in. I don't know whether York was the first place they settled in or not, mm -hmm. uh, where I was born, but that's the only one place I can remember that they told me about. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was it was rough because in the year that I was born in 1918, remember, there was a war of 1918. Right. Right. So it was really, really, a, a, a rough time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now this is when you're a little bit older or you're still growing up. Did you ever have to go to the hospital to get stitches or broken no. bones? No, did, I did, never had to. Not until you were an adult did you break a bone. I was an adult, <laughs> but I never had any broken bones and never had to. Uh, I didn't even have my tonsils out, so I, I never had to go to the hospital for anything. Now, you and I talked about this um, on the phone one time. Uh, but the trans transportation at the time, I think we talked about that you remember when you were a very small girl, your father driving a truck home, it was the first time you remember? Uh, well, I can remember the first thing, my dad worked for the same, uh, what was a lumber and coal company, and while he was really a carpenter, when I was a little girl growing up, I can remember him delivering coal in a wagon with horses, and uh, we had ice delivered to our place for our old ice box mm -hmm. that you put ice in. We had it came with an ice wagon and horses. And uh, then I can remember uh, in a few years later when the first truck, and it was a four truck, if I remember correctly, it really didn't even have any doors on the side of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what my dad used to deliver um, uh, lumber and stuff mm -hmm. to people when they ordered it and was going to be making repairs or building a house or whatever it was. And uh, I know that uh, that's about all I can remember about the, the horses, uh, but I can remember the first car my dad got was a Ford Model T mm -hmm. and it had the eyes and glass windows on it that we would put on uh, in the winter time mm -hmm. and in the summertime of course you took them off and uh, I think I have mentioned before that uh, my my dad was a uh, fire chief mm -hmm. for 29 years and after I became probably 12 13 years old I used to go to the fires with my dad mm -hmm. uh, they were notified in those days, the fire whistle blew, but in the, those days uh, he was called because we would have a red light at the telephone office on our, on our line and he was called to notify where the fire was. And when that phone rang, I would get up and answer the phone and my dad would get up and he had his fire clothes all hanging in one end of the closet. And uh, while he was dressing, I would throw on a robe or what have you, and I would uh, run out and open the garage, and then he would come out and we would go to the fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can remember, especially in York at the Catholic school, uh, that particular night I was older and I was at a dance, and the fire whistles just blew and blew and blew, and it wasn't long until you could see the flames up in the air. So a bunch of us from the dance climbed in cars and stuff and, and uh, followed the lead to where the fire was and the, the Catholic school was on fire. And I, at that time, saw my dad climb up a ladder and carry a nun down to safety. And, uh, but there was the J.C. Penney store that burnt down in York. I was to that with my dad and the big grain elevator. Mm -hmm. But I just went to the fires with him all the time. But I always went, we went in the Model T car. 
And then the next car that my dad got was a Studebaker, and that's what I learned to drive on. Yeah, was that, a, that was obviously a shift car, it was not Yes, no, yeah. that was a, a hand yeah. shift, uh -huh. you know. And, uh, but that's what I learned to drive on. Mm -hmm. But gee, we thought we came up in the world from yeah. a Model T to a Studebaker. Yeah. I'm sure you did. What were your favorite outdoor activities? Oh, my favorite activity was dancing, whether it was inside or outside. <laughs> um, and I, I went to, as a, a girl growing up, I, I went to the football games at York High School. And of course, enjoyed that and all the group that I ran around with. And uh, uh, in those days, they still, they still cruised. We cruised <laughs> up and down Lincoln Avenue. <laughs> and, um, uh, I loved to play uh, baseball, mm -hmm. too. I played, or softball. Uh -huh. I used to play softball an awful lot as a girl growing up. And um, just uh, going to picnics, and one of my favorite things was every 4th of July, we went to another town called Seward for 4th of July. We went there from the time I was a little girl till I was uh, a grown up mm -hmm. uh, young lady. and. Uh, we always, all the family went, and there was swimming, and they had, as I got older, uh, they had dances in the big dance hall there mm -hmm. at, the, at the park, and um, I looked forward to that every year, because mm -hmm. I always got to take a friend or two with me, and mm -hmm. we just had a great time, but this was something we did every 4th of July as a family, mm -hmm. and we just had a great time. Did you have any pets, and what were their names? Yes, I, the first pet I ever had was a dog, name Spot that my brother, Homer, or Chris as we called him, gave me when he moved to uh, California. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I had the dog for quite some time, but I don't even remember what happened to it. <laughs> uh, and then we had cats around uh -huh. the house. Uh, I don't know if this was my special cat, but we did have uh -huh. uh, kitties around the house. And, uh, and then after I was married, we had Duchess. And the children were little. They had a dog too. Uh -huh. we? Taffy. Mom, Taffy. Mom has, Mom that's Taffy right. Taffy down. was our was our <laughs> pet. <laughs> yeah. um, did you have a best friend growing up? Yes, I did. In fact, uh, Lola Mae Ellers. Her name was Lola Mae Charlton. She lived across the alley from me. Um, in fact, her birthday. She celebrated her 80th birthday this summer. Uh -huh. And I heard from her son and wrote a letter to her. And uh, we grew up together, started the kindergarten together, and went through high school together and graduated together. Wow. And uh, used to go to dances together and used to go to movies mm -hmm. together and so on and so forth. And did all the things that girlfriends do. <laughs> Talk about boys all the time. <laughs> yeah. just, like, just like today. Yeah, now that part hasn't changed. <laughs> did you ever have a fight with her? Uh, not a serious one that I can remember. Uh, we might have had some, you know. Tiffs. Yeah, yeah. tiffs or uh, maybe little arguments uh -huh. and things, but I don't remember about mm -hmm. ever having a, a, uh, a, you know, a real serious mm -hmm. fight, no. Uh, where was your favorite place to go when you were angry? <sighs> well, I'll tell you one of the favorite places if I got real mad was to go. We lived about two blocks from the railroad tracks. But I could take a back way and go down, and there was a, where the track went over, and there was a little road underneath of it. And I'd go down there and sit under the bridge. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's what I went when I got real angry. No place to think. Did the other kids ever tease you, and why would they tease you? You know, I hear that so much on different talk shows today about how uh, children are bullied and, and teased and, and it's really quite a serious thing. I don't ever recall that. I really don't. Um, we started to school. There was a whole group of us and we always walked to school and uh, we went as a group and, and I don't remember of mm -hmm. being teased. I'm not saying that I wasn't, but I just don't mm -hmm. re remember of it. It wasn't anything big in my life or I'm sure I would have remembered it. Okay. How many homes did you live in from the time you were born through high school? One. One. Oh, that's right. You said you lived in the same. You moved in when you got married, too. No, just the one. And what did it look like? Well, it had a big front porch, 
and on the back side of the house, well, at, well the first place when you went up the big, you had, we went up about seven or eight steps to the porch, and you went in and you had your living room, and there was a bedroom off from the living room, and they were all just kind of square rooms, mm -hmm. and there was a dining room, and it was kind of a square room, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and then another bedroom off from the dining room, and then a real long kitchen with a pantry uh, off that and a sink in the pantry. And uh, uh, yes, we had a part of the bathroom. Uh, we had a tub in it, and that's about as far as we ever got with the bathroom there. And then on the very back of it, we had what they in those days called a sleeping porch. But it was a porch that had a lot of windows in it. Mm -hmm. And in the summertime, lots of times in the hot weather, that's where we would eat our evening meal out there. We mm -hmm. had a table and chairs out there, and we had a little cooking stove out there. And, uh, and then we had a basement, mm -hmm. and we, we, we didn't even have a refrigerator or even an icebox for a while. We had what we called out by the pump, as you went out the back door where the pump was, we had a cistern or a well where my dad fixed a rope onto a bucket and we put our, our butter and milk and things like that in there, cover it all up well and drop it mm -hmm. down into that well, and that's where cold? it stayed cold. That's interesting, huh? Um, did you have your own room? Uh, not until after my sister, my youngest sister Luella left. Mm -hmm. Then I finally had a room mm -hmm. by myself. Now we've talked a little bit, you already mentioned a little bit about the appliances you had. To wash your clothes and yeah. light the house. And you and I talked about lighting the house. Did you remember no, electric lights? we had light? electricity. Mm -hmm. We did have, but they were just bare light bulbs mm -hmm. in the ceiling. They were no lamps or anything like that. And then we had a... In the kitchen, we had a great big cook stove mm -hmm. that we burnt corn cobs in and wood in and what have you. And um, we also had one down in the basement that my mother used to put the boiler on to to, uh, to uh, heat her water because the water had to be extremely hot. And all the white clothes not only were washed on the on the uh, we washed them on the scrub board. Then the white clothes were taken and put in the boiler and boiled before they were ever put in the washing machine to wash. <laughs> and uh, we uh, to get our water, we uh, had a, a pump outside, like I've said before, and my dad had connected a hose to that and ran it into a barrel through the basement window. And at Sunday night was our job to, my sister and I, the youngest sister and I used to take turns. We'd pump like 20 pumps at a time till we got that barrel Mm -hmm. and that's what she would take the water out of to heat and then the cold water to rinse the clothes in mm -hmm. and they were boiled and then they were washed through the wash machine sometimes they were washed through two wash machines and then they were rinsed through three rinses mm -hmm. so she would be amazed at the way we wash today <laughs> yes I'm sure she would what was your favorite thing in the whole house and do you still have it funny you bring that up. I have, that was my mother's, and I used to help her because we did a lot of canning things in those days. One of these old-fashioned grinders that you fasten to the edge of the table, and we ground up like she'd make um, uh, sweet pickle relish and things like that, or we'd grind up meat for, for uh, uh, we used to make our own mince meat, and then not only that, but uh, we would grind up meat for sandwiches and things. And that always amazed me how you put the meat in there and, and the things, and you'd turn it, and it would come out all ground up. And I still have it today. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing it. How many people lived in your house? Uh, well, uh, the most that I can remember was the four my mother and dad, and then my sister that was a little older than I and myself and that was the all that mm -hmm. lived in our house. How did you keep your house warm in the winter and cool in the summer? Well we had a big pot-bellied base burner that sat in the dining room and uh, lots of times a blanket or th something was hung up between the living room and the dining room to, so that we wouldn't have to heat that room 
and that's the way we and then the big cook stove out in the kitchen and that's the way we kept warm and in the summertime I don't really even recall ever having a, even an electric fan mm -hmm. I guess we just simply accepted it yeah. <laughs> we were hot <laughs> the best we could we dealt with it <laughs> did your house have a room that scared you and why no no not the, the basement didn't scare you? No, no, not really. What is your fondest memory of the house you lived in? My fondest memory, I guess, was in the wintertime, and even after I was married, I always loved that. In the wintertime, when it was snowing and blowing outside and it was so cold, and we'd be all be home, and we'd have popcorn and apples. That was mm -hmm. that's one of the fondest memories I have. That's nice. Again, and then of course our our family get-togethers. Mm -hmm. That was so important to us mm -hmm. as we grew up. What was your most memorable holiday celebration, and why? Now, do you want this before or after I was married? Either one. Either one. Probably the fondest happiest holiday I can remember was the first Christmas we celebrated after after um, Grandpa came back from the war, mm -hmm. World War II, and uh, to have the kids all together, and I think maybe one of the fondest was the year that uh, <laughs> we were redecorating our house, and uh, but Jim had been in a contest and he won a bicycle and uh, each one of the girls got exactly what they wanted for Christmas mm -hmm. that year and it was a it was a very happy time for That's us. Good. What did you usually do on Christmas? It was a family day again. Um, I used to, when the children were little, it was so hard because I was working to get up and, and have them open their gifts in the morning and everything so we used to do it on Christmas Eve until they got a little older where, where we could handle it all because I usually have the dinner at our house mm -hmm. and um, at that time we didn't go to uh, Marie calendars and buy our pies <laughs> and all these things we did them ourselves and so lots of times you stayed up until one or two o'clock in the morning just getting things ready uh, for your dinner the next day and then we had a big family dinner and uh, lots of aunts and uncles and uh, I was the one that had the children and uh, all the aunts and uncles were extremely good to the children and they all brought them gifts and uh, it was just a good mm -hmm. happy time. How about Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was just about the same. I was going to say, was it, it just the about same? the same thing? Uh-huh. I keep dropping this. Do you remember a special gift you received from it, someone? Yes, I do remember a special gift. When I was, I don't know how old I was, but my mother uh, worked with the Methodist Church a lot, uh, the association, the Women's Association. And they had a big Christmas bazaar at the YWCA there. And uh, I don't know whether somebody made the doll or whether I don't know, but I went with her up to get things ready. Uh, they always served a big meal and what have you. And I saw that doll, and I thought it was the most beautiful doll I had ever seen in my life. I wanted that doll more than anything in the world, but I knew that my parents could not afford it. So I can remember telling my mom, Mom, if I could just have that doll, I'd never ask for another thing if I could just and she said, I wish you could, but we just can't afford it. And on Christmas morning, I got the dog. Oh. And that was one of the most wonderful Christmases, mm -hmm. I guess, that I ever had. Mm -hmm. I'm about to uh, run a tape, I better change tapes. But it was just homemade, mostly sheets. Mm -hmm. We were ghosts. We had an awful lot of ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in fact, in those days, they didn't have costumes in the stores like you could go and buy now. Mm -hmm. So it was just make, you know, whatever you could fix up at home. Do you remember being something special besides the ghost? No, I really don't. Uh, 
Except uh, one year after Grandpa and I were married, uh, we were invited to uh, a Halloween party, and I went was as Mae West, and he went as Robert Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I had the big hat and the mm -hmm. whole the long dress and everything. I can't even remember. I must have borrowed it from somebody, but mm -hmm. I was a quite a Mae West. <laughs> Did you make uh, cards to give on Valentine's Day? Yes, yes. We used. To, I can remember sitting around our dining room table making, making uh, 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 Valentine cards to take to school because mm -hmm. we always had a Valentine box at school and exchanged uh, Valentines. And they were just made out of colored paper and mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes you, you got these uh, lacy doilies mm -hmm. and and used those to decorate them. And then uh, you always. Uh, well, now I'm gonna I'm gonna get May basket day and Valentine's mm. mixed up if I'm not careful because I was gonna say you put candy but no we didn't in the Valentines but we did in our May baskets mm -hmm. that we made and I don't think they do that anymore but not we yet. used to take May baskets around and take May mm -hmm. baskets to school and we used to put candy and we made our own May baskets too mm -hmm. out of paper and made little baskets and put handles on them and then we put. Uh, uh, candy and, and flowers, whatever flowers was blooming at that mm -hmm. time of year. And then we'd take them around to the houses and, and uh, put them on the doorstep and knock on the door and then we'd run to them if they caught us, they were supposed to kiss you. Oh, and you didn't want that. <laughs> Did you ever get flowers or candy from a boy? Oh, yes. Not grandpa just Grandpa. was pretty great about Not it. Just, but before Grandpa. Anybody before Grandpa? Well, uh, let's see. I don't think I could. They probably couldn't afford it. <laughs> yeah. What's, what elementary school did you go to? I went to Willard School. Same, same as that the kids mm -hmm. all went to. All my kids went to the same How about school the, and high school that I went to. And with the junior high? Was it York? No junior high. Okay. I just went to York. From uh, elementary school you went to York to high school. Did you ever take any college classes? Uh, the only ones I ever took, I took the Dale Carnegie courses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, that's about all that I took. What kind of student were you? Average. <laughs> average. That's a good question. A good answer. What was your favorite class? My favorite class. I used to like geography real well, and even though <laughs> sometimes uh, arithmetic was a little difficult, I still liked it. I liked working with figures, uh, and I'm like well, a lot of the kids. Recess. <laughs> yeah. What was your least favorite class? My least favorite, I think, was science. And now, when I got in high school, I loved typing and public speaking, and of course, I hated Latin. We don't have to do that anymore. No more Latin. I'm glad. <laughs> Who was your favorite teacher? I tried to think in in grade school. Uh, Nell Beers was her name, and in high school, Louise McNerney. And did they influence you in any way for yes, life? Yes, Louise McNerney definitely did. Mm -hmm. She was such a gracious lady, and she, um, I don't remember when she would just be, uh, not in class, but just when some of us were talking state after class, or how she impressed upon us what, how to be a young lady. Oh, that's nice. How did you get to school? Did you walk, take the oh, bus? Yes, we you walked. walked. No bus? No, no buses. Okay, now remember, you're not going to get in trouble for this. Did you ever play hooky? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and who did you play hooky with and where did you go? Oh dear, do I have to tell <laughs> this? <laughs> well, there was probably about two or three girls and two or three boys and we would play hooky together. Oh. And mm -hmm. uh, go to one of the houses. <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough said? Enough said. <laughs> enough said. <laughs> Uh, what kind of school activities or sports did you participate in? Uh, I like to play basketball. Mm -hmm. And I was on the basketball team in, at the high school. And also in grade school, too. We had, you know, gym and we mm -hmm. always used to have a basketball. And um, and I loved the football at that time. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun when then we have our, on Fridays we used to have a, uh, Convocation. We told them, we, we called them at that time, but it was more or less just to get everybody hyped up for the oh, football like game. Like a pep rally. And a pep rally. Uh huh. And then the, our football uh, was right. Uh, our um, 
where they played was right behind the high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, at those, we didn't wear a lot of uniforms and stuff like they do now because people just couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. But uh, as uh, later, I wore practically the same kind of a uh, um, outfit that the girls wore when they were in high school and would belong to the pep mm -hmm. clubs and right. so on and so forth. Were you a good athlete? Um, I was, I was pretty good at basketball. I was pretty good mm -hmm. at basketball. And when you were in high school, what was your favorite music group? Music room? Raising group. Like, uh, oh, Glenn Miller. Oh, the acapella choir. I used to sing in the acapella. Well, is, I, like, is there a, a group like Glenn Miller or Benny Goodman or anything oh, like that? Oh, yes. Yes, all of those. Uh, all of the above. Uh -huh. All of the big bands uh -huh. in that era. And Lawrence Welk. Lawrence Welk. And what was your what was the most popular dance step? Well, the bunny hop got pretty mm -hmm. uh, special, and uh, uh, the uh, oh, the waltz, of course, was very good. And the and the uh, two step and. Uh, but the bunny hop became very popular, and uh, I can't know if there was a particular name to it, but we used to form a line and uh, do uh, all around the dance floor, mm -hmm. uh, one behind the other, and uh, I don't know really what you called it, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite radio show? Um, oh. They used to play all the popular pieces as they were numbered, one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. America Bandstand. Mm -hmm. And did you ever tease or play jokes on your teachers? Your daughter says yes, just so you know. She does? <laughs> Let me stop and think. Well, I can remember one in our, um, uh, oh dear, uh, her name was Adela Mead. And she was a typical spinster. And uh, the boys used to just tease her to every putting things on her chair and, and on her desk and putting and taking things off her and putting uh, that she had on her desk and putting it in someplace else in the room where she couldn't find it. And we all joined in with it. And we were all guilty of it. Um, what was your personality like during your high school years? What was my personality like? Well, I guess sort of like it is today, maybe. I don't know. You were um, outgoing? Were you outgoing? Uh, yeah, I was very outgoing. And I loved uh, drama and public speaking and uh, uh, and working with uh, groups. And I, I joined a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I've always been a joiner. And, and when I am a joiner, I have to get in with both feet. And uh, and I like I like being with people. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I was the same way back then. I can't remember. Uh, I mean, I, I was pretty easygoing, really. Did you get a lot of homework from your teachers? We got enough. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you said you sang in the choir, but did you play an instrument as well? No, I did not. No, I didn't. Do you remember your first date? My first date? Oh, dear. <laughs> and do you remember the boy's name or how old and old you were? Yes, I remember. It was in high school. His name was Glenn Graham. And I thought he was absolutely wonderful. And it was more or less a blind date. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, there were several boys in high school that, um, I don't know whether you called them dates or not, but you'd see them at the dance or sometimes, and lots of times they'd walk you home. You know, mm -hmm. that didn't cost anything. Yeah. <laughs> You uh, did. You were your first boyfriend. My first boyfriend. Yes. He was from a little town south of York. And his name was Jerry. Uh, he was tall. He had black hair. And he used to come to the dances all the time. And I dated him quite often for a long time. Did your parents ever, uh, did they have to approve of your dates before you could go out with them? 
Uh, not really, but they set down some very strict laws as far as what time I was to be home and all this and all that. Do you remember, um, do you remember what time you had to be home? Oh, on a dance night, I had to be home by at least 12.30, no later than that, because the dance got over at 12. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I mean, I'm sure I didn't follow all their rules <laughs> to a T, uh, but uh, I was always supposed to behave myself. <laughs> uh, were you ever grounded? Oh, yes. Do you remember why? Yes, if I didn't do the things that was, I was supposed to do, on uh, a certain occasion, whether it was cleaning the house or whatever it was, uh, yes, I was grounded. I couldn't go if I was planning on going out that night or something. I was not get to go. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you learned to drive? You already said it was the model, the, the Studebaker you learned to drive on. Uh, I had to be at least 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. And who, besides Grandpa, who was the boy you remember most? Was it Jerry? You talked about it. You described him pretty well. Was Jerry? Uh, did you get to talk on the phone as much as you wanted to? <laughs> no, not as much as I wanted to, but I did talk on the phone quite a bit. In fact, you just get home from the school, which I can remember my kids did also. You just get home from the school, and the first thing you know, you had to be on the phone calling up some of your friends, and you had just left them. Well, it wasn't any different when I was And it's not any different today. <laughs> no, and it's not any different today. That's right. Uh, what do you remember most about being a teenager? About being a teenager? It was a it was a happy time and it was a it was a uh, an amazing time too because so many changes were taking place um, and of course I was like most teenagers at that time growing up most of your thoughts were about boys and uh, uh, different things that you. Uh, did uh, 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 one of the things that we used to do a lot is there was a, a favorite drugstore that had a a, a a oh kind of an ice cream parlor more or less, and we'd like to, uh, to all gather there and have our cokes and things, and we used to even do that on our way to the dances on Saturday night, and. Um, you know, instead of dating a lot, we went together as a group more or less in those days. Uh, but it was just, we just had a fun time. We, we weren't uh, mean or malicious or anything like that. We just really had a lot of fun together. And it was a, I had a good teenage, I, except that I lost my mother when I was just about ready to graduate from high school. But other than that, I had a good, mm -hmm. fun time in growing up. Okay, here's a difficult one. Do you remember your first kiss? Oh dear. <laughs> I'm sure it was spit in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know exactly. Unless it was on the, the blind date I had with this Glenn Graham, mm -hmm. I guess that was probably my first kiss. When and where did you meet Grandpa? When and where did I meet Grandpa? Well, <laughs> I seem to be real good at blind dates. That's how I met him. <laughs> and how old were you? I was... I was 19. 19. Did your father approve of him right away? Mm -hmm. And where did you go on your first date? Where did I go on my first date? I think we went to the movies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we didn't have a car, but one of his friends had a car, and of course we used, as I say, we did a lot of cruising around and, and riding around, and uh, we'd go to a lot of these little towns around York. Mm -hmm. uh, why, I don't know now why we did it, but we did. And uh, it was just, uh, and a lot of smooching went on, of course. <laughs> How long did you date him before you knew he was the one you were going to marry? Uh, I dated Grandpa about a year to a year and a half before he asked mm -hmm. me to marry him. What attracted you to him most? He was a very handsome man, for one thing. He wasn't real tall, but he was a very handsome man. And he did sort of resemble Robert Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell me about when and where he proposed to you? Yes, it was at our house, in our oh. living room, in uh -huh. my living room. And were you expecting it? I sort of thought it was coming. <laughs> How many times did he ever propose before you accepted? 
What? What? <laughs> Uh, when and where were you married? I, I know you were married on uh, New Year's Day. We were married in the parsonage of our church, the First Christian Church in York, and we were married on a Sunday morning before church services. Okay. Uh, describe your wedding and your wedding day. I didn't really have a wedding. I mean, I, I had gotten me a special dress and things like that, and we had this special couple that stood up with us. Um, my dress was a teal blue with little nail heads all over it. And uh, Ted wore a navy blue suit, and uh, I had a corsage, and uh, we just went to the minister's house that Sunday morning, and uh, Pearl and um, Ray, I believe was his name, isn't that terrible? I can't even remember now. Uh, they were with us, and it were our attendants. So Pearl was your maid of honor then? Uh-huh. And Ray was the best man? Uh, is there anything funny, any, anything that was funny that happened on your wedding day? <laughs> um. Well, it was so different than the weddings today, of course, but we didn't have anything like that. Um, that we drove from York to Waco down to my to Ted's sisters and all his side of the family was there and uh, had lunch and uh, they got in our, my, or our suitcase and tied all of our clothes in knots <laughs> I remember that I hadn't met a lot of well I hadn't met his other two brothers no the one brother I hadn't met and I met him and he was so full of the devil, <laughs> and he really just teased us terribly. But from there, believe it or not, we drove to his other sisters that lived in Waverly, Nebraska, and that's where we spent our wedding night. Uh -huh. And of course, they had everything in the world tied on the bed. <laughs> uh, did you, you didn't have a honeymoon, did you? Not then. We uh -huh. didn't have for several years later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We rode back from there on the train. That was a honeymoon. <laughs> to yeah. to York. I'm going to ask you some questions about mom now. Okay. okay. What was she like when she was a baby? Very cute. Very pretty. And what was Both she like? The, all three of the girls were very pretty babies. I that doesn't sound much for Jim, does it? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but they were uh, very pretty little babies. They really were. What was she like as a teenager? As a teenager, she was very... Um, She doesn't live with you now. You can be honest about her. She was moody. Uh, she was um, argumentative. Let's put it that way. And what kind of chores did she have to do? Uh, I worked, so they had to clean the house. She had to help clean the house, especially on Saturdays, and see that everybody's clothes were pressed and everything to go to church because we always went to Sunday school and church the next day. Mm -hmm. And did she do them readily, or did you have to uh, convince her to do them? Well, let's just say she did them. <laughs> I don't think too happily sometimes, but she did them. What kind of mischief did she get into? Well, I've heard more <laughs> since they've been married than I heard beforehand. I didn't think they could do any wrong. But uh, I guess they played little tricks on the teachers and things, like letting air out of their tires and... Uh, things like this uh, on Halloween and things that I didn't know at the time uh, because to me they were the perfect children. They couldn't do any wrong. <laughs> no, I, I know the answer to this, but did she ever get spanked? Yes. Uh, did she behave in school? Yes, they were really did very well. All, all of the kids did very well in school. Was she a good student? Yes, she was. Not an intellect, but she was, mm -hmm. she was all right. She did all okay. What do you remember most about her when she was growing up? Uh, well, she, Karen was a very popular girl in high school. So was Marilyn. And Sandy had a boyfriend from the time she was in seventh or eighth grade, clear through high school. Um, they were well liked. They had a lot of friends. And uh, they were certainly welcome to bring their friends at home, which they did. 
And, but Sam, or Karen was a very, they were pretty girls, and Karen was a very pretty girl as long as, and uh, very popular. She had a lot of boyfriends. <laughs> Oh, did she ever do anything special to surprise or make you happy or proud? Oh, they all did. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I can remember especially the thing that really touched me probably more than anything else was this particular morning Karen worked at the drugstore, Boyer Senor, and uh, she had been one of those mornings when you could have said that the sun was shining and you could have said something about it being a sunny day and she'd tell you it was going to rain. And she had been hard to get along with, and she left to go to work, and she came home at noon for lunch, and she had a beautiful card and some candy for me, and apologized for the way mm -hmm. she'd been that morning. How about Marilyn? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, of course, Marilyn was in a Miss York contest, mm -hmm. which made us very proud. They all did things that were that, right. you know, just right. the... What I said about Karen isn't mm -hmm. the only thing that right. she done either. Many times they did things that in class or or uh, they were both uh, on the paper in high school um, and uh, they were in plays and dramas and and uh, and in Job's Daughters. I mean, they all mm -hmm. did things that did Jim I was did, very proud of. Did Jim ever do anything? Yes, like that too? Jim uh, uh, was a he was. Uh, he didn't go out for a lot of sports, but he did go out for football. And uh, Jim was a good worker. He worked uh, real hard at um, a uh, drive-in, and then he, uh, a drive-in um, eating place, not the theater, but drive-in eating place. Then he also worked at the drive-in theater too later on. And uh, he, we finally got him to join D Malays. He didn't want to very badly, but we got him to join D Malays. And he was just a good kid. We didn't have to worry about him when he was growing up. We really didn't have to worry about Jim. There was only one time that he stayed out, and we didn't know where he was at, and it didn't go too well. Yeah. But other than that, they were just great kids. I had very little trouble. We had very little trouble. And Sandy, did Sandy do anything? Sandy uh, was not a joiner. Mm -hmm. She did join Job's Daughters, but only because her sisters insisted that she did. Uh, and she, I think Sandy was the quietest of them all. Uh, she didn't really care to be in the plays or to join a lot of things. She did belong to the pep club, if I recall. And she, uh, um, as I say, she belonged to, to Job's daughters. And, uh, but she wasn't as outgoing mm -hmm. quite as much as Marilyn and Karen were. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to ask some things about today, kind of. What? What fads do you remember best? What fads what do fads? I remember? Well, like I was saying a little bit earlier, uh, the poodle skirts, they wore those and the, the skirts with all the crinoline starched uh, uh, mm -hmm. skirts underneath of them, slips underneath of them, and kind of they've kind of gone back to that at different times. and. Um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think what other fads that are still good today. Um, cruising, they still like, mm -hmm. young people still like to get out and cruise. Uh, um, and girls still talk about boys mm -hmm. as much as they ever did. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? What did I, I want to be a nurse. And you were. That's what I wanted to do. Is there anything you've always wanted to do, but you haven't done? Want to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a hint? Yes. <laughs> um, what people most influenced you? My dad had a big influence. He was, um, I never in all the years that I knew my dad ever heard him say an unkind word about anybody. Uh, I wish I could say that about myself, but he was, he was one of the most wonderful people. He always had something good to say about everybody, and he was always there to lend a helping hand, and if you needed his advice, he was right there to help you, and uh, he was just an old-fashioned father, mm -hmm. and he just was a great person. 
what events during your lifetime have changed the world the most? What events during my lifetime? Well, of course, World War II was an event that changed my life in many ways because um, Ted was gone and he was injured. And uh, I was home with three children living in one room. Uh, that changed my life considerably. Um, and as I had my children, uh, I that was the main thing in my life to have a family. And uh, I was so happy when each of them was born and just as proud of each one mm -hmm. as I could be. Mm -hmm. And they've always made me feel that way. And uh, at just just having the wonderful family that we had and all the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren that I have, it's been a wonderful life. Um, what invention do you think has changed the world the most since you've been alive? What invention? Oh my. You know, I suppose we'd almost have to go back to electricity because from electricity has come so many other mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Other inventions, television, computers, uh, stoves, uh, heating of our homes and what have you, all mm -hmm. from electricity. So I would say that's probably one of the greatest inventions mm -hmm. that there ever was. What is the most memorable event of your life? Well, I guess most of us would say the birth of your first baby is probably one of the most wonderful things that ever happened to you. Another one, of course, is getting married. Um, in the first place, finding a, a, a man that, to, that you love to get married to and have your family. Um, I think and having my grandchildren was the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. Thank you. I really do. What person do you most admire and respect? Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> do I most admire? Oh, there's a number of them. And there's some at the blind center since my vision problem that I admire so very much. Um, when I see how they do, how they have faced their problem and, and uh, met it and gone on and are totally blind, they absolutely amaze me at the things that they do and the things that they try and usually succeed in doing. Um, I had, she was not my aunt, she was my husband's aunt, Aunt Susie. She was one of the most wonderful people I guess I would ever have hoped to have met in my life and uh, we loved her dearly and she had quite an influence on me because she always had a kind word to say and uh, she loved to go she loved to go you could go over and pick her up without or go over to her apartment or her house when she lived in a house she wouldn't be knowing you were coming she could be busy vacuuming if you said you were going someplace the vacuum was turned off and she was ready to go and that's the way i am <laughs> I think Mom said that about her, too. Uh, I'm out of tape.